So let's go ahead with the, the first speaker for today, uh, Dr. Daniel Sharon from Hebrew University. He's going to give an interesting talk about intrinsic ion transport and interfacial phenomena in nanostructure of solid state electrolytes. Uh, Daniel, stage is yours. We talk about block of polymer electrolyte, but ionic transport in those structures. And, and then we're going to talk about a little bit about the electrode position in such of the electrolyte. We already started talking about it. So, again, Emmanuel already mentioned that uh, yesterday in the talk, let me look uh, at uh, about the possibility of using solid state batteries mainly to do their uh, safety. Uh, <laughs> to liquid state uh, batteries, uh, so that's the major motivation. Uh, usually, it's coupled solid state electrolytes are coupled with metal batteries. Uh, and the reason for that, uh, people propose that they can trace uh, the dirty gold, people also observe that. When you put like, a rigid membrane, a solid membrane, it can suppress it for several reasons. We we'll talked about that. Uh, but first, I will start to talk about the uh, the ability of polymer to have a design structure. So unlike liquids, which have a structure, but of course uh, it doesn't uh, have the same structure as a solid, which is stable, uh, and ion transport can go through them, and there's the advantage of uh, using them, of course, doing uh, inter uh, like interfaces, and really designing uh, an electrolyte. Uh, so what is the problem of a uh, solid electrolyte? Yesterday it was mentioned that usually they're working at high temperature, and the reason for that is because of the ionic transport mechanism. So ionic transport mechanism is a little bit similar to the input, but it's much more slower. Um, so it's uh, working on the ionic coupling mechanism. And you can see it on the slide. Uh, the diagram of the ionic coupling is polyethylene oxide. That's the most famous polymer electrolyte. This is for the oxide. You see the lithium is coordinated with five or six oxygens, which is very important. And you have unoccupied site. Those sites can move, polymers can move, you have some dynamics, pretty slow, but it can move, come closer, close enough, and you can have this ion hopping mechanism, and then, of course, the chain reaction, you can have ion conduction, uh, but you need this movement, and uh, this is just uh, some simulation, and this simulation, so you can see that the ion, how it's moving between the polymers, the polymers don't move a lot, uh, it's, it's, the speed is very high here, uh, but usually what you need to do to get to those a higher movement of better segmental motion is to elevate the temperature, go above 60, 70 uh, uh, Celsius. And the problem with that is that then you lose the mechanical property of the polymer. The polymer becomes like a rubber, become like more of a liquid state uh, polymer, and you really lose all the all the things you want from the rigid starch. <laughs> so one way to do it is to add a, another block to uh, a synthesized block of polymer, where you use a, the PO as the ionic conductor, but you add covalently a, a, a polystyrene or any other high mechanical robustness uh, polymer, and you have this polymer that now you have the ion conductivity and the high mechanical strength. Uh, what is nice with them is that they have structure. Those two polymers don't like each other so much. Uh, in some uh, conditions, they phase separate. And they phase separate into those nice structures. Spheres, cylinders, they get a lamella, like you see here. All depends on the fraction of each polymer. And you can see here it's a layered structure, so you have a polystyrene and PO and polystyrene. And then you have those channels of ion conductions. Of course, if they were mixed, there was more problems, right? If the polystyrene and the PO were mixed, the ion transport won't be so uh, successful. So this is the phase diagram. I won't go into too much details about the phase diagram here, but what is important is the you can see on the bottom near 0.5, uh, which is the disorder state on the bottom. As you increase high end, 
and I will talk about this kind is, you can get to first operation, L is lamella, so if you are 50-50, you get lamella, and kind is the flory Huggins parameter, and really how much these two polymers dislike each other. So higher chi means the polymer wants more to phase separate, so you get better phase separation. Um, so what is the challenge with those materials? The, the main challenge is how we characterize them, because there's a problem to characterize them, there's a problem how to understand them, and how to improve them. So usually when we prepare a, for a battery, a thick membrane, a micro-thick uh, membrane, you put it between the lithium or the cathode material, measure, if you want to measure connectivity between two plates, metal plates, but if you go to the, uh, uh, the microscopy, the electron microscopy, and you go deeper, it's not really a homogeneous uh, structure, right? It's a multi-plate structure, so we have, this is the fingerprint, lamella, it's from the top, so you see the PS and the PO face separate, so you have the channels of the PO and the PS, and if you go to a 3D, this is a cross-section, you can see the PO, let's say it's the dark one, while the white one is the polystyrene, you can see that there is also like a tortuous pathway, and also there is some blocks there, so I put here the green arrows, let's say you can think of ionic transport through this channel, which is allowed, let's say, in the vertical and just straight ahead, however perpendicular to that, to this channel, the ion cannot cross, either there is a gray boundary that there is something that don't allow it to transport the polystyrene, which is not productive. So really, we say, we call it, I call it more extrinsic factors. It's the tortuosity, the pathway is not straight for the ion to move, so it's longer, so the conductivity is lower usually. You have gray boundaries, so it just hits some polystyrene the, the blocks. Uh, so when you measure the conductivity, usually what people are doing is they take the measure the ionic conductivity of the block of polymer, and it's usually equal to the home polymer conductivity, which is just PO, we take just the ionic conducting material with that polystyrene, multiply it by the volume fraction of the of how much I have here, it's 50% PO, let's say. And then you need to multiply it by extrinsic factor, which again, it's kind of assumption, right? It's very random, there are theories, but it's very problematic. So the accuracy and the conductivity that we get are really uh, far from what we want to, what is desired. And another thing that we want to add is that in theory, although you don't see it, you see many the extrinsic properties that affect it because it's order of magnitude higher, you also have intrinsic properties. So we want to assume that the PO that is in the center, in the domain, is conducting similar to homopolymer. You just put a map in homopolymer. However, there is a polystyrene in the interface, so it might be different. And this assumption might be problematic, and that's really what we wanted to see, if there is a difference and can we find it. So one way to do it, to avoid those extrinsic uh, phenomena, is by self-assembly. I won't go into too much details, but that's the main part of the work. It's a lot of polymer physics. Uh, so the idea is that you use the surface energies of the substrate, of the free air, and the polymer. You spin coat the material, it's a thin film uh, phenomena, and you use the surface energies to align those lamella structure, and uh, any other structure, you can do it for cylinders. And now you have, you know, depends on the energy, you can have them parallel to the surface, or you can have them perpendicular to the surface. But the idea here, to emphasize it, that it's really similar to a, a single crystal idea, as people do it with, the, with inorganics. Now you don't have great boundaries, you don't have tortuosity, everything, all the ions go through a very a, a definitive pathway. So what we can do if we can measure those ones now is to remove the extrinsic properties and really the measurement is going to tell us exactly what is the conductivity of the block of polymer and therefore we can start thinking how to improve. So what we did here is using the PSPO, uh, that's the most famous one, we call it also SEO, this is the block of polymer, and we added little TFSI, it's the salt, and we changed the ratios, uh, same as concentration, but in polymers you do a, a lithium pair ethylene oxide unit. It's helpful because then you can explain better the mechanism and I'll show you why. So this is the procedure, I won't go into details. But how we're going to measure them is going to, we're going to spin code, we're going to fold them, form them, we're going to fabricate them on top of an IDE, an integrated uh, electrode that really measures the, the, the founded with some 
a preliminary investigation that the electric field is sufficient to measure the entire, uh, the entire uh, surface, so we can get really the intrinsic uh, conductivity of the material. Um, so I want to give one example of how we are well, able with this platform really to have a, a detailed understanding of a block of polymer. So this is a measurement, uh, probably some of you know, of conductivity as a function of salt concentration. Uh, so you can see we start from low, 1 over 100, we can tell the oxide and increase the, uh, the salt concentration. And what uh, we observed initially, as we expect, is that the conductivity will increase, right? As with solutions, everybody knows here, you add salt, you increase the, the, the charge carriers, and the conductivity goes up. Of course, also with solutions, you usually have a maximum, and the conductivity starts to go down. And, and the conductivity in solutions, it's viscosity and association, those kinds of phenomena. In polymers, we have additional phenomena, which is uh, the main effect can be cross-linking effect, because the polymers really bind strongly to the, especially PO to the lithium, as you add more and more salt, even from the beginning, from initially, you change the uh, 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 dynamics, you slow the dynamics, and we talked about how dynamics are important, right? Because you really need the polymer to move a little bit for the ion to reorganize and to have the ion move. So when you put those lithiums, they really coordinate so strongly so you can have like kind of a network, a cross-linking network that now slow down the movement. So what we can see is that with the home polymers, people observed before, there is a peak, maximum and the connectivity really goes down, people say it's because of the segmental mobility that goes down. Uh, however, what we found with our platform, that we measured the block of polymer, we saw that the connectivity doesn't change. We increase the salt, but the connectivity stays, stays stable, which is very different from the home polymer. So initially we thought, oh, it might be the segmental mobility. Maybe there isn't a costly effect. Although, if you think about it, it's the same chemistry, right? Home polymer, you just make a home polymer, you synthesize a home polymer, you finish. With the block of polymer, you don't stop, you just add B and continue going. It's the exact polymer, right? You just don't stop with the home polymer. So it was very, very weird, uh, but the segmental motion wasn't different. It was the same. So it wasn't the segmental motion, as people suggested. That's not the reason they are different in the conductivity. So we went back to Kai. And I will say again, Kai is the Flory Huggins parameter, but it's really telling you how much they dislike each other. And I didn't tell you before, is when you add salt, you increase Kai, uh, especially with PSPO, because the lithium one prefer to go to the PO and not to the polystyrene. And really what it makes, it makes the PO more different from the polystyrene. You can think about it like that. So it makes it really more to face separate. So we can see this linear behavior, which is very famous, for block of polymers, because uh, it feels more and more salt, and this is for the regime one, if you remember. Both block of polymer and home polymer behave the same. However, in regime two, what we found is, again, it's stabilizing. So you add salt, but you don't change the thermal, you don't change the, phys really the physical nature of the polymer, the thermal dynamic. It's very, very weird. So we wanted to know where the lithium is going. Where the lithium, where is the TFSI? We use spectroscopy. Here, for example, I'll show you the, the Raman one. So the Raman is really helping us to look at the TFSI anion, where it is, how it's solvated in the, in the block of polymer, in the homopolymer, and we compare between the two. And you have two peaks, uh, the big convolutum. One is that the TFSI is not doing any association with the liquid. It's free, for free TFSI. It doesn't do anything, it's just in solution, in the polymer, sorry. And the other one is associated species, where the TFSI start to coordinate with the liquid. Okay, and usually higher, higher salt concentration, you get more association. But we wanted to see what is the difference between homopolymer again and a block of polymer. And in the low regime, low salt concentration, these two uh, 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 spectra are identical, almost. Almost identical, not a lot of associated species. However, when we move to the second regime, what we found that there is much more associated species in the block of polymers. And we wanted to understand why, why, why there is a difference between them. If you think, again, the PO is exactly the same. So where are the, those species are formed and why they are formed? And everybody, you know, at least people that uh, uh, worked on block polymer understand that the interface is there. It's the place where 
the different might be, right? Where the polystyrene and the PO meet, and really they're mixed, they're never like this, like I said, like they don't synthesize and they uh, uh, face over it like this. There is some mixing, there is some kind of interface, and the interface has different physical properties. And using the uh, simulations with uh, a collaborator, uh, that time was a postdoc, now he's a, a, he's a professor, uh, doing simulation on the interface. And wanted to see where is the lithium TFSI and how it's coordinating in the block of polymer. And what we found, I'll make it short, uh, you see the prof profile concentrations, you see a PO, the TFSI and the lithium, and zero is the interface. You can think about the polystyrene, and then the PO, and where is the lithium and where is the PO. So of course, if you got it minus, if you got it the polystyrene, there is nothing but polystyrene, no salt. And then you start and you see, get to the interface, the PO goes up to the low concentration on the left, and then you have a little bit lagging, and then you can see the salt. So the salt is more in the center of the block, you can see. And as you go, they overlap. But what is interesting, you can go to the final figure there, one over four, really high concentration. What we find is that the dark blue, which is the PO, now is lagging. So really what happens is that those associated species that are formed can segregate to the interface. So they have little packets there in the interface. The physical properties of this interface, and I didn't mention, we're talking about domains of 10, 20 nanometers. So the interface is two nanometers, but the density there is so different. The physical physics there is really, really different. So those associated species can find themselves a place there. And this is now can explain the connectivity, and that, with that I will uh, 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 conclude this part is that in the homopolymer and the blockopolymer, the low salt concentration regime, you increase the salt, everything is the same, right? We saw from spectroscopy and we have more, more measurements uh, to uh, prove it. The trend is the same. The blockopolymer here, you can see the connectivity is lower, and that's also because of the a, 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 a fraction of the phase. You have just 50%. Um, but what happens in higher salt concentration is for the homopolymer, homopolymer as with solution, as with most uh, electrolyte systems, you add salt and you get to a maximum and it goes down. Uh, however, with the block of polymer, you see it stabilized. And the only, uh, I think, proposal I can think of is that it depends on the ionic uh, 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 conductivity mechanism. And that's really, I think, uh, uh, can, can show why this method is so important, because it's also explained why PO, how PO is being. So you can see that the dashed line is really between 1 over 12 and 1 over 10. So that's how much PO, how much lithium per oxygen you have. So if you remember this diagram that I talked about, you can count the number. Here it's around 10. Some people say it's 12. So you need occupied and unoccupied sites. So you need lithium per 12 oxygens to have the probability to jump. However, when you increase the salt concentration, right, what happens, you fill up another site. So the probability for the ion hopping to occur really decrease. What happens with the block of polymer is that this addition of salt doesn't take up more sites, it just associates, and you have a space, a nice space to go to the interface to be there and not interfere with the ion conductivity mechanism within this channel. Again, it's five to 10 nanometer channel. Um, so with that, I want to uh, conclude this part, but this is also related, and I want to see more application, and I know people are interested in batteries, and people have mentioned uh, yesterday and today, the holy grail using lithium metal, but of course safety hazards, and not just safety hazards, I have to say, also the efficiency is usually very poor, right? The deposition is not so well because of the morphology, because of side direction, so it's not just safety, you need to get to high efficiency. Um, so why we have dendrites? This is really uh, in a nutshell. Uh, so we usually have a surface, you have perturbation of a uh, local electric field, concentration, over potential stress, so like a linear stability analysis, like you have uh, this wave, but you always have something, right? Uh, even if the surface, most of the time, the surface itself is not so flat when we use a copper or something like that. But even, even if you don't have it, those fluctuations will happen. So usually ions, prefer to go this local electric field or as a over potentials area. And what you get, they start to grow. So you have one option, you get stable growth, and some people show in low currents, 
positive feedback, as I'll talk about, you get flat and dense metal. They don't grow, uh, 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 they, they don't develop. Those petrosation don't develop and you get flat, smooth lithium metal or any metal that you want. And the positive feedback, how you, uh, how you get to this point, usually is whole, all using very low current density, so you don't get to the diffusion limitations. But also you can do it with high modulus electrolyte, as we talked about, something strong that really push it down. That really <laughs> push it down. Uh, or you get uniform ion diffusion, some people put some layers, then, then you get nicer ion diffusion. Of course, it depends as Emmanuel discovered or about the SEI, which is not, it's even more complicated, uh, how dynamic diffusion occurred there. And I will talk about the steep perturbation dimension. So also you can think about people when they put separator, Really, they have also the force, but also they have this uh, tortuous structure and small pores that also can avoid the dirty penetration. So, but what happens usually at the end, because th that's the thing with lithium, at the end you're going to have some small fluctuation somewhere, and it's going to happen. Even if you are really believe that your system is perfect, after 100 cycles you have a small perturbation that go, and then you get this irreversible, irreversible go, and the tips start to split, and we call this uh, size of perturbation a, a, a lambda critical. That's the size where really there's no going back. We we'll start to split and we we'll start to go this dendrite, and you don't want to get it, of course. But uh, we'll talk about a little bit how to do it. So this is other people work. This is block of polymer, the same, almost I think the same block of polymer that we use, the Tash Balsara, where we put like a block of polymer, really. Because of rigidity, it's better than a PO, let's say, homopolymer, but you can see from the tomography, the X-ray tomography, it is penetrating at the end, you have a short circuit. This is an Indian Archer group where they do a cross-linking, cross-linking similar with nanoparticles or just a polymer itself, so you have a membrane and then you avoid a metal growth. And this is more, they say, less mechanical, more dimensions. So the dimension is so small. So those ones cannot penetrate. And, and polymer separators. And people are working a lot about polymer separators, how to avoid it. But you can see here, this is zinc, I think. And you see how they penetrate at the end. And even from the tomography, it's very hard to see. And what we wanted to, again, to do is to take those local polymer, remove all these intrinsic problems. Because here, you don't see the local polymer. You don't see the structure. Here, you don't see the structure. It's very hard to define what really happens and do it with our system. So here you can see we use silver, so we deposit silver, it's on a flat electron, and it's a PO polymer, it's a solid state uh, with a silver salt, and we start to deposit on the platinum surface and we see how it's going. And you can see, of course, we get dandrides, PO is not great, it's very soft and we use elevated temperature here. So you go those dandrides, what is nice with this co-planar electron is that you can take immediately to the SEM or the TM if you want. Uh, and you can make uh, pictures that show you really <coughs> lambda without any destruction and to take those sizes and really define lambda critical. There is a way to do it on the sizes here, but on the right you can see really the particle splitting, the hard shape, it's really where, where it starts. We, we didn't catch it, it was by accident, but you can see the nice splitter. So what we wanted to take is to take lambda critical now and really confine it to our block of polymer, to make block of polymers with different sizes and to make it a little bit smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, so we started from big on the right, really much bigger than under critical, then a little bit lower. Uh, and at the end, we made it smaller than the splitting, than the instability size. I wanted to see what happens. And uh, we did it by, I won't go into details, also block of polymer self assembly, but what we have at the end is a PO line with silver salt. And then you have a block of polystyrene. We don't know, maybe there is salt there, but you shouldn't have with higher modules. It's much more stronger than the PO. So we'll see what happens. So this is really what the experiment is, and we watch on the silver. So when you have large, this is like 500 nanometers, it's much higher, except lambda critical here, I didn't mention, was around 70, more 90 nanometer, where they start to split. So you see. Dendrites, but what was important for us was to see that they are confined to the polystyrene. They don't penetrate to the polystyrene. The reason for that is that they don't have any ions there, but they don't deform the polystyrene, which is what's nice to see. We went a little bit smaller. Again, they confined. Maybe you see less secondary branches, 
But what was very nice to see is that when we went to under lambda critical, we get to those dense matter. So this is controlled uh, growth, and we don't have any splitting, any high aspect ratio dendrites, and really you get just a dense line of metal. Uh, there is ways how to use it now for, to avoid the dendritic growth, but what was also important to show is that even if you make the smallest pore, it doesn't matter, the, 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 the metal will penetrate, so we need to think about how to really uh, make them, uh, how to use those, uh, those ideas, and here it's like a similar uh, a model for a separator where I start to grow the metal and it's go into trenches, similar to what happens with liquids, and we observe those ideas and how we can block them, other materials. So really we want to take it further and now we start to advertise the, uh, the lab that we are uh, working on in the Hebrew University uh, that I'm going to start very soon. We want to do it in situ also to watch the dynamic of the growth and see how we can avoid those dendritic growth. Uh, so I would be happy to hear uh, any uh, suggestions for collaboration for people here if uh, I don't want to take any students. Uh, <laughs> but if you have friends that want to come and join uh, the Hebrew University, I would be very happy and I'm here to talk and uh, thank you very much for the conference. Thank you. Thank you.